the stack on the right, I'm not sure whose that is. The stack that the Yes. I got push push back on the um, in service pay. You may come up there. I'd like to call tonight's meeting to order. This is a finance review committee special meeting. Um, tonight is May 21st, 2015, and it is six minutes after five. I'm sorry for the delay. It was my fault, but I was trying to get everything together last minute. So if you will, forgive me for that. And then the first order, um, um, first order of business was to call. Second is the agenda. So I get a motion to approve the agenda? Okay. Got a first? Second. Okay, and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The third item is new business. Discuss and take action. Um, first draft of budget 2015-2016 fiscal year and I'm open the floor up for discussion thank you mayor I'd like to start off if I could okay uh, the documents that I was commissioned to bring back to the board uh, you have uh, placed with you I emailed everyone uh, my, the uh, City Manager Hall and, and basically city uh, management's recommendations. Um, I could not get the numbers to uh, 4.2 and 3.5 respectively with uh, what we feel like needs to uh, uh, maintain uh, the, the, what we feel is the well-being of the city. Uh, we feel like any pay cuts or layoffs at this time is not in the best interest of the city. Uh, but I did get some pushback on the numbers uh, that uh, regarding the in-service pay and uh, grant money that is really uh, not specifically unassigned monies. It is a designated re revenue, designated expenditure. But also I do respect the argument that uh, those monies were included in the uh, uh, figure that came up with the 4.2 and 3.5. So at this time, uh, uh, Mr. Hall has asked request that the board consider adjusting that to 3.7 and 4.4 respectively. Uh, we feel like the $200,000 uh, will not, um, although a lot of the things don't have a monetary value, uh, the, the, the impact that, that layoffs or pay cuts will have on on the city uh, I feel like is greater than, than that amount. If you look at the first page um, the city manager's proposal I've got a this page right here it is has a comparison of each one. The, the layoff proposal the pay cut proposal both hit your 3-5 and 4-2 number so I did want you to have that at your um, in your hands. Also behind it are the details uh, if you if you want if you need that. Um, 
So basically, at the top, you've got your property rate increase, property tax rate increases, which generates your revenue, then your employee-related expenditures, operating expenditures, total expenditures, surplus, and then you go down with your surplus trying to meet your goals. Um, you know, our three main goals are stabilize, stabilization plan reimbursement, uh, fully funding the school facilities fund, and uh, providing funds for a census and impact fee. Um, as you see, the, uh, the goals met with any property tax rate at the top. Um, the, the bottom, um, only the top one is, is met with, the stabilization plan is met with all of them. The school facilities fund um, is either started or gone about halfway through, and the census and impact fee is not, um, there's not, not funds available. Uh, and as you go on down, uh, you can- Can I stop, a, can I stop you real yes. quick? I'm sorry, on the school's facility fund, does that include that 200, or any of these? That doesn't include the sale of the Deer Ridge, right? No, sir. Okay. The, um, anyway, as you go on down, even at the dollar rate, um, none of the plans uh, fully complete um, everything. They get close with the dollar. But uh, I just, I guess from a management standpoint, we, uh, we ran numbers till um, every which way I, I put uh, pay cuts down to the scales. Um, in this pay cut um, proposal is 7% uh, across the board uh, and it stops at 35,000. Um, which that gets the layoff proposal and the pay cut proposal about the same. Uh, we just, the city manager and I, we just we just feel like for $200,000, um, we, we need to hold tight where we are. Three. Tom, can I ask a question? Sure, you can. Uh, is there any reason or any prohibition uh, that we would reverse the, the school facilities tax and the stabilization plan reimbursement? In other words, can, could, we, could we put enough money into the school facility tax fund with the sale of the Deer Ridge to bring that current and have less money the first year in the stabilization plan reimbursement? It was my understanding when we passed a resolution for the stabilization plan, that, that resolution I feel like would have to be reset. But if we did make that amendment to that resolution for the first year we could go we could take uh we should we could bring the school facilities tax back current in one year by doing that yes okay were we able to do that this year how much were we able to pay back this year this current fiscal yeah. year yeah how, how much are we going to be negative there we, is uh, we've got enough money to pay for the library. What now? We've got enough money in our reserve to pay for the library. Uh, in the school facility tax? Yes. It's, so we're going to be zero. So what's supposed to be in there, the negative 600? When you take out the, the library, uh, my estimation is right around $410,000. Yes. It may be that I'm reading this wrong, but I'm looking in the municipal budgeting. It references the municipal budget law of 1982 and what are the legal requirements for a city. And it says all budgets must be balanced in order for a budget to be balanced beginning unassigned fund balance plus estimated revenues must be greater than or equal to appropriations. So we've been looking at this strictly from a next year perspective, but to me this reads as if we've also got to figure in whatever our negative <coughs> balance is at the end of the year. 
I guess yeah, and, I Mr. Mean, Cantrell can tell me if I'm reading this wrong. So um, where do we stand this year? We're ending with a negative $410,000 balance in a, a um, designated fund. And then how much are we going to have an unrestricted? It, it should be about zero if you're counted the way I've been counted is I've been I've been paying up the unassigned and having a negative balance I mean paying up the um, school facilities fund and having a negative unassigned fund balance do you know what's in the checking account today can you tell me what how much money we have in the checking account I have not looked today I would it would be my estimation 250 between 250 and three hundred thousand dollars Okay, so the library fund, which is the school facility tax, um, it is a negative 410000 or it's going to be, and is that is a, a separate fund? I mean, is that 70000 yes. a separate fund? Yes. So the, your guesstimate would be not including the library money? Right. Okay, and is it including the... Um, Restricted park fund? No. Is it including the tree? No. Okay. So those are all separate. separate and there. So your zero balance, but is the, the so the 200 is not including the tree fund and the park fund and. But it's including State Street Aid. Yes. We should have about six hundred and fifty thousand dollars in there, and to fund both of the, the school fund and the state street aid, and then we have two hundred fifty thousand, so we're three hundred fifty thousand short. Yes. Are we going to dip in? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Are we going to dip into state street aid? I don't believe so. I have I've got to get the numbers current to date, but we're we're not. I don't believe we're going to dip into State Street aid. We're pretty close now. I mean, if we you said how much is in, how much do you estimate to be there? Two hundred and one. My last figures we were in. Um, I think I my estimate is going into the um, school facilities tax three hundred and fifty. I've heard some people think five hundred. Some people think. 400. I mean, I've, I think, I think it's going to be closer to 350. I guess what I'm saying is, is if you said there's 200 and I don't know what number you used, 40, $250,000 in the, in the checking account right now, that's what you estimate to be there? Yes, but we just, yes. Okay. So, and there's supposed to be 200 of that is street aid. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I believe it's lower to, I believe it's probably, yeah. In our part of the library, hypothetically, if we had to pay it today, is 80? It's not, yeah, it's about 60. seven. So if we had to pay that today, less, we would be into the, we would be into the state street aid. Well, that, the library is in a separate account. I've moved that into a separate account. Oh, you've already time. taken it out? Yeah. Okay, okay, good, good, okay. Well, that, that's good. Okay, so um, your projection for the end of the year, and that includes um, all payrolls, any other bills that are going to come up, and um, the heat and air and whatever else that broken at the park, um, you feel like we're going to end up this year with how much in our reserves? I believe the last figure I had was between six hundred thousand and six hundred fifty. 
And that's including all the designated funds? Yes. And the restricted? That's, that's total. Okay. Mr. Control, can we use um, restricted funds and um, designated funds to balance our budget? I think that question would probably be uh, for proper answer to go to the auditors, but I don't think you can use those restricted funds to balance your budget. Okay. And what about designated funds? Well, if they're already designated, then you... Well, um, when you... Designating meaning like the park is designated for the park and the tree is designated for the tree. Can you use that? Not those those funds. Now, if you've got something you're taking from the general fund that you're going to do that, you cannot do that and, and, and use that. But designated funds uh, cannot be used except for the purposes for which they're designated. Okay. That's the reason for having designated funds. Yeah, I understand. Um, do you think, though, to balance your budget, we can use designated funds as reserves, as unrestricted reserves? I think you're going to use those as, as you can't be designated, which is restricted, and unrestricted at the same time. Right, exactly. That, that doesn't make any sense. Right, and that's what I'm saying. That's what we're doing. We're counting these restricted funds as our unrestricted funds, and it's illegal, we can't do it, and they'll shut us down. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'm a little concerned saying that we don't have to, that we can't make any cuts, and this is what you recommend, and it's not in the best interest of the city. The best interest of the city is us staying physically stable and not being shut down by the comptroller. I don't know how else to say it. I mean, we have letters saying we have overspent and we need to cut. We're on a stabilization plan. We have a debt restructure. We're in trouble. We can't keep going this way. I don't know what we're gonna cut, but if we do not get it together this year, Nobody's going to have a job. I don't know how else to tell you. When the comptroller comes in, and I'm going to say it again, I said it last time, but make sure I'm loud and clear. When the comptroller comes in, they will fire everybody, sell our assets, and then whatever's left, they will raise the people's taxes to pay the difference. Now, I think last year the auditors did allow, if you pull the audit out, that the restricted funds were part of all of it, but we cannot count restricted funds. We cannot go into another budget year and only have restricted funds. What's going to happen when we dump out the tree fund and the park fund and everything we have and we don't have the school facility tax this year. We lived off the school facility tax and we weren't supposed to and we did. So what's going to happen when we don't have that tax? There's no rating day. I can show you times where it was close through bank statements. Close doing what? Not having the money. Mayor, could I ask you a question? Yes. Uh, based on your comments about the comptroller's office coming in, mm -hmm. what is our current debt that the city owes? And if our, you don't know, we can go, Tom. Yeah, anybody. I mean, we can look it up, but I have that letter that says, um, I just had it. Three million, three, three million it's about, dollars. It's about 2.8. 2.8 million. And if we have assets uh, over 20 million, would they distribute the money back to the citizens for the difference when they sell everything? I, you know, I don't, I've never asked that question. I mean, because if you're looking at, if you say there's just seven, there would be seventeen million dollars. Well, I mean, do you want excess. the city to go? I mean, no, no. no I, I'm, you said that they would levy a tax above, and I'm saying if we're seventeen million to the good, are they? Would they give that money back to the citizens? I don't know. We 
we can call and ask. Um, I, one thing is, um, I mean, if we could sell, you know, this building for its what it's worth and all the cars and whatever, I mean, they may not have to, but I mean, it's not really common that you can sell these properties for the same price you purchased them for what we owe. And y'all, I'm not being dramatic. I'm just basing it off of letters that we have been given. I mean, and the truth of it is, um, you know, I've asked, you know, I called the comptroller's office and says, what is this used for? What can we use for this? What do we, you know, can we, um, how much do we have to have? And it, we have to have one month's operating expense in our reserves. So, you know, this is not something I'm just making up. We've got to figure out how to fix it. And if we keep getting budgets where we're not doing that, then, you know, I guess all I can say is y'all must not like your jobs because every, nobody's going to have them. And so we got to figure out a way to fix it. All we have to do is one year, one year, let's all sacrifice, let's all do something that will raise the taxes, we'll build back up our reserves, and it'll be, we'll be in a better place. I mean, Mr. Hall and I go to meetings all the time. You know, we have a lot of potential, there's a lot of growth, everybody's looking at us. Um, you know, we already know that there's gonna be rooftops, there's taxes that we are putting in place, there's things that we can do, but when we turn our budget in, they're, you know, they're gonna have that we're trying to, you know, pay back our um, unrestricted reserve and that we will, we have a debt restructure plan. And then we're gonna show them that we listened and we cut the budget. We invited them in when we did the debt restructure. I don't know how else to, yeah. Mayor, I'm just curious, and I, I've heard the number $20 million in assets thrown around, thrown around, around rather a lot. Do we have an actual asset statement that shows what the assets are and the values? I've got an old inventory you're welcome to look at. Dude, I'm just curious, how much of the how much of that $20 million is the park? I'm not sure. I would suspect a substantial portion of the $20 million is the park. I mean, I could I be wrong. Too. I've not seen the list. I'm, I would like to see the list. Okay. Um, I, I just want to say that, you know, I, I appreciate what Mr. Hall and Tom have come back with. I understand why they came back with it. I wouldn't expect them in their position in management to, to come back in here and agree with any of the proposals that we've made because the proposals that we've made are hard for everybody. And if anybody thinks that probably everybody on this board hasn't lost sleep coming in here and making these proposals, they're wrong. In fact, I was sick last week, physically sick from being up the past week, the weekend before that, trying to figure this this out and alternatives to the proposals that I came in here and made last week that I certainly didn't want to make. I, uh, it was brought to my attention tonight that I, that I used the word my road when I was talking about taxes and what I was trying to do was say, speak in first person and say, if you're gonna raise my taxes and not pay my road, then I'm upset because I don't see you know, I don't see anything coming from that increase. And my road just does, and there's some other people live on this road, I think uh, Captain Jones would attest to this, our road's pretty bad. Um, and there's other roads in Fairview, and I think this past week is just uh, strengthens my point. We've had two roads that have caved in um, or had sinkholes in them. So we have some issues, and that particular area of the city, the streets department, has probably been the most neglected department in the city uh, in terms of what they have to work with and how they can perform their job. So yeah, I was concerned about increasing folks' taxes and then not being able to do some of the things. We provide great police protection, no question about it. We provide great fire protection, no question about it. But there's that other prong um, and streets and infrastructure, um, building maintenance, ground maintenance, that's all part of it. And I was concerned when I got the budget that we really weren't, the first draft, that we really weren't doing anything in those areas. It was simply what I would like to call just a maintained budget, but not going to be sustainable for any period of time because we still, although we raised taxes, we really didn't make any cuts. And I've said numerous times, and I'll say it again, that I don't think it's fair 
for me to come in here and vote on the budget that you presented it at, the budget that you presented to us with a significant tax increase but really no significant cuts. And I know you would like for me to consider that debt restructure as a cut for purposes of being able to justify raising taxes on the other side, but the debt restructure didn't come without a cost. It's going to cost us a substantial amount of money over a period of time for that debt restructure. So I don't think that that gives me the ability to, to justify a tax increase to 90 cents, which is what you guys have come in here and proposed. Again, I appreciate what you're doing. I, I know why you're doing it. But we've, as I told you both yesterday, we've sort of been fixed on these numbers for a long time now. I mean, $4.2 million is not a new number that just came about last week. We've asked to come back with $4.2 million. The first time we asked you guys to come back with $4.2 million, we missed the mark by about a half a million dollars. I was asked, well, how did you come up with that $3.5 million in employee-related expenditures? It wasn't rocket science. It was take $4.2 million less what I thought you was going to have in operating expenses, which was around $700,000. Actually, I had $800,000, which put it at $3.4 million. I didn't think that was reasonable or that we could get there and still provide the level of service that we have. So 4.2 less $700,000, which is what your operating expense number is, leaves $3.5 million for employee-related expenditures. So that's how I came up with that number. You can also look at it the other way. If we start with last year's revenue, which is what we've said we're going to do over and over and over in this stabilization process, <coughs> subtract the $360,000. I put this math on the board. I mean, some, if for some reason people think I arbitrarily came up with 3.5 3 million, and that's not the case. Subtract your 360,000 out, take out your employee-related expenditures of 3.5 million, that left 623,000 to operate the city. <coughs> we can't do that. We can't do that. We've, we've talked about this at the past two meetings we've had about just just basically <coughs> crippling ourselves on, on the operating side so that we can maintain the same level of employment. And I, I wish we could do that. And in a perfect world, we could. But we've got to find places to cut. I don't think we can cut on the operating side <coughs> anymore. So I came in here with a proposal last week to raise taxes a dollar, keep the cuts that you had made on the operating side, and then find some cuts on the employee-related expenditure side. We're $200,000 off that mark based off what you brought back. We talked yesterday, and I still stand by my proposal. I, I still would like to see the dollar, us raise taxes <coughs> to, to a dollar, but that 15 cents of that be earmarked for specific funds. I think I said last week one, a nickel would go to parks, not Bowie Park Fund, but <coughs> parks, to maintain and expand parks throughout the city, not just Bowie. Um, a nickel, that would go to streets to give us some extra money there for the infrastructure and the growth that we expect to see over the next next few years that we've really neglected. And then a nickel of that would go to debt service or the first year, if we choose to do it, would go to the uh, special <coughs> census and the impact study. So I stand, be stand behind that, that we need to raise taxes to a dollar. And in reality, it probably needs to be more, but I can't justify that with cuts on the other side to try to attack this thing from both sides, which is what I've, what's been my goal the entire time. So, you know, we looked at it, and I think last week when I had brought my pros on here, I was asked to give, well, how did you reach your $3.5 million number? And I like to try to substantiate the numbers instead of just throwing out a number. And I said, well, these are the, play these are the positions we could fund. In retrospect, I wished I wouldn't have done that. Thankfully, I haven't had a heart attack this week, or the fire department might not have come out, or a burglar at the house, or the police department might not have come out. But nonetheless, I was trying to substantiate how I could get there. And, you know, I thought that it was going to be seven or eight <coughs> positions based on the numbers. After speaking with Tom and Mr. Hall yesterday and, and running the numbers, there's two positions that are currently unfilled, one in the PD and one in the uh, and the fire department that would not be filled, and then there would be three positions affected under my proposal, three. And that would get us within $17,000 of our $3.5 million mark, which I can live with. But, you know, people have said, well, this it's $200,000. It's not a big deal. Right now, in the situation we're in, it's a big deal. 
I wished it wasn't. I wished I wasn't in here in my first term in office having to discuss this. But I am. The employees didn't create this. The citizens didn't create this. But we're, we're having to talk about it. We're having to make tough decisions because of um, the past actions of not, when I say this board, I don't necessarily mean these people, but this board dating way back. There's just been one decision after another that has, that has put us here, coupled with other things that no one had control over. The economy, um, just sort of been a perfect storm to get us where we are. And, and we've got to take action. We've got to take drastic action. Um, and, and, you know, some, somebody has got to take the reins on this thing and, and pull it in. And, you know, as, as a member of this board and as a citizen, I'm looking to Mr. Hall to do that. And I know that it's a, it's a tough decision. But, but I stand behind the proposal. I think my, my proposal, and, and again, it, it gets us going into next fiscal year based on the numbers that Tom ran. Now, Tom's numbers are going to be a little bit off because I think you included in your numbers all of the tax increase into the general, <coughs> into the general fund. Is that right? You're talking about the all of the all of the, the dollar you put in the general fund and the yes. numbers in the numbers on this sheet. So actually fifteen cents of that based off what I'm suggesting would go to an, to other funds. But nonetheless it, it gives us it gives us some revenue flowing into those funds to do projects that we can draw from that money instead of maybe out of the operating budget. Um, and it just puts us much closer to, one, we'll have our $360,000 in the stabilization plan, which we, I think we've all agreed, based off what you said earlier and based off what the resolution says, would take <coughs> three, three years to accomplish. You know, not, not four, not five, three years. That's what we agreed on, just like the $4.2 million. Um, under, under a scenario, if you did what Commissioner Bissell said earlier and, and you funded the school facilities tax first, it would take us longer than three years <coughs> to fully fund the stabilization um, plan. So the dollar, the increase to a dollar and uh, coupled with the cuts is going to get us much closer to zero to start <coughs> next, next fiscal year. And we, we still wouldn't be there completely, but much closer than any of the other the other, well, not, not much closer than the proposal that the mayor is making. It would be roughly the same. It's just a different way of doing it. Instead of affecting three positions in the city, you're affecting the entire organization by a pay cut. Um, <coughs> but certainly much closer than the, than the plan that you guys are proposing, respectfully. We're, we're $200,000 off. <coughs> so, so I stand behind the proposal I, I made last week. I, I just don't feel like that the proposal that that you guys have brought, I can vote for that that tax increase because I can't substantiate or justify voting for that tax increase and not cut on the other side. Don't forget you've got to add to the expenditure side the 300000 plus that we're going to be short. So if, we're, if we get a budget for $4.2 million, it's really $4.5 million because of our shortage from this year or whatever that number is. Or we have to raise taxes enough to offset that 300,000 to the 300,000 or the 500,000 whichever one it turns out to be um, has to be added to our expenditures for next year would that not be double is that not the money we're looking for that goes into the school facilities fund is that not is that not that shortage is that not what causes the shortage it is what causes the shortage, but we, we won't have a balanced budget unless we address it. So we went in negative this year, and we'll go in negative or last year, and we're going in negative this year 
but I, but I think when we did the budget last year, we didn't realize we were going to be in the negative. This year, we we know we're in the negative. We have been all year. Did we ever come out? Maybe one month we came out, but. On, on a positive side, any any one of these proposals is a, cle a complete 180 turnaround for this city, um, and it's it's going in the right direction, in in my opinion. Um, there's, they, I commend the board for the, uh, doing the stabilization plan. I com commend everybody for for um, making decisions. I feel like. Uh, with the stabilization plan and with everything we're putting into place, uh, the comptroller will um, look uh, favorably on that. If it, and, and everything we're doing is is trying to right the ship. Um, so every, I'm I'm excited about the letters that I that we've gotten from the comptroller. I think uh, I think it's good. And I as far as um, the budget. Uh, stuff that Miss Brooks has brought up, I can research it. I, I'm not 100% sold on on that item. about saying that. What, what is the, the time constraints placed on what we pass? How much money? Well, what, what we said was that we were, we had several goals that we were trying to uh, achieve. Um, and what we said was that we would do it at the rate of $30,000 a month or $360,000 a year. Uh, the only thing that we gave a specific redistribution to is that by the end of this fiscal year, we would be flush in State Street 8, and then the school facilities tax, we would put 25% of the 360 in, in, two, in 16, 25% in 17, and then remaining in 18. So that answers, that answers the question of could we use the go ahead and put more of it in if we chose to do that. So I believe based upon that, that we could take all $360,000 and put that money into the school facilities tax fund next year, and that along with Deer Ridge Road would completely pay that back and put us at a solvent. Granted, we would not have any reserve except for whatever surplus we developed, which at this, on Tom's budget, that's $120,000. So we would end the year at $120,000 surplus, but all of the funds would be solid. So uh, then, in the out years of 17 and 18, the 360 would then be used to uh, create the, the true stabilization fund and the, the uh, cash flow hedge, for lack of a better term. That's what we call it in here. But as I read this, if this is what we adopted, uh, and uh, what we did was the only change that I made a mark on here is we said it, it would be obtained in three fiscal years rather than two. That's what I changed on my copy. So uh, 
I believe that we could uh, it doesn't say anything about not paying it early it just says that we we could at least put we have to put 25 percent in there so I think we could easily take the 360 and do that um Commissioner Bissell what made y'all do the um, decide to do that um, plan why, why did y'all decide to, um, why did we do the resolution to pay back the unrestricted funds? Well, Mayor, you could answer that. You were there. You know. Well, I mean, I, I thought it was due because it was a recommendation from the auditor. I don't know. It was something the Finance Committee I brought. Say, from the Finance Committee and not the auditor. Well, I, I, I can tell you what, the, what I believe the basis to have been was that I attended the training from MTAS for government officials, and there is a section in the training that indicates uh, what reserve funds are supposed to be used for, and then there is a section that says if your reserve funds drop below your policy, then the response to that is to create a repayment plan. Now, that's what the training says. So, uh, and I did not bring my book, but I think we've all been to the training, or I know you have. But uh, that's what it said. So I think that's probably the basis for why we came up with the plan. Uh, you know, it, it uh, but, it, but uh, the key to our plan was to, was to take $360,000 off the top, and that's what Tom's budget does, and still creates a surplus. Now I have a little different recollection of this 4.2 situation. My recollection is in a finance committee meeting, uh, I made a presentation that had more specific numbers to it and that at the end of the meeting, Ms. Brooks made a suggestion that rather than go with my numbers, that we would go with just a general 4.2 to 4.3 million dollars and that would be the gross amount there was not any discussion about what part of that would be operating expense or what part of that would be personnel that came along later when uh, Commissioner Crutcher uh, put forth uh, his his estimate as to what those should be um, so uh, yes uh, I believe that uh, um, Tom had a responsibility to come back in between 4.2, 4.3, but I believe the original proposal to him did not qualify him as to how he would do that, and the original proposal did not require him to take the people that he planned to pay for out of street aid and add that $245,000 back into it. So to me, the 3.5 becomes unreasonable because we have changed the parameters by which we gave the man to start with. So if we want to relook at that and get some better numbers about what our actual revenue is for the year and then look at what he wants to spend for our people, what the city manager is proposing, then whatever the operating expenses are, it is the city manager's responsibility to deliver the budget inside those operating expenses. And so as far as I'm concerned, nothing's really changed except that the numbers are a bit fluid still, but this is a budget for next year, and at this particular time, all the numbers are going to be fluid because we've still got 45 days left in the year. So that's my recollection, which is a little different. But Mrs. Brooks, do you, did you want to comment on that? I agree with his recollection up to the point where um, we only changed it in the last meeting to say that it should come out of employees because we didn't think the city could operate without, they didn't have enough resources to operate as it was and did not think any more cuts could come from it. That's what we voted on. 
Y'all voted on, we didn't vote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, the, last, the last meeting, I think the reason I had issue with the operating expense part of it was is we were already down to in the 700000 to $800,000 range with no appropriations made to improvements to streets, maintenance to buildings, maintenance to grounds. We essentially had cut all of that out of the budget to get us to that $700,000. So I, yeah, I don't think that's realistic. And, you know, that's why the 4.2 million has sort of shifted to, the, to its focus to the employee related expenditure side of things. Because if you take, if you take 4.2 million and subtract $700,000 from that, which is what he's got in here, 711, $711,000 for operating expenditures, that leaves you with 3.5 million for employee related expenditures. I mean, it's just, Simple math. I don't, I don't know how we can. You know, I agree with Commissioner Bissell that the number we originally gave was four point two million dollars. That's true. But when you, when you look at what we've cut on the operating side of the budget, it, it becomes apparent quickly that we're not going to have any money to do anything. We're going to have. 59 people working here, but but no money, no money to uh, do the things that, that I think are, are um, necessary for us to do, especially in light of the fact that we're asking for such a significant tax increase. So that's where I came up with, with, with the numbers. It was, it was not, you know, again, like I said, it wasn't just some arbitrary number. It was just simple math, how you get there. I thought we had said all along that we were going to start with the actual revenue for this year. The actual revenue for this year, which is projected to be $4.4 million. Subtract your 360 off that. We've gone over this on a whiteboard over here even, and in several different presentations. Subtract your $360,000. That gets you down to $4.1 million. Four point one four million one hundred twenty three thousand dollars, even less than four point two. So then, if you take your seven hundred thousand dollars, which I think, in my opinion, is sort of a bottom of the line um, for oper the operating side of things, that gets you below three point five million. Again, I didn't think it was reasonable to go below three point five million, so that's where that number came from. Um, Ms. Brooks, you had a comment. I know that we don't have any money, extra money that we should be spending, but maybe it's time for us to hire a consultant who actually understands all the laws that, um, and maybe Mr. Cantrell can do it for us, I don't know, uh, a CPA that, that has done work with cities and can give us a concrete number on what it is that we have to have so that we, I mean, Three and four and five hundred thousand dollars is significant, depending on whether we have to have it or not, um, to get us closer to the number that that is our drop dead number. Well, I don't think you have to hire a consultant. You can call the comptroller too, you know, and ask them basic questions. I mean. Mayor, I think, I think you're exactly right. I think not only the comptroller's office, but probably our MTAS representative. And our uh, auditor, they could probably sit down. Between first and <laughs> if we get a budget that we pass first reading, I have no problem letting them look at it. I would I like a definition from both organizations of what we can and what we cannot do, absolutely. So we have a clear understanding it has been done one way for a long time, not just this year. Uh, if, if, is it approval? Can they approve it or not approve it? If they can't, then we have to work around. They have to do something else. But if they say, yes, that will work, then we're okay with that. I am. Anyway. Um, and I think the state is more than willing to work with cities. I don't know how many cities they sold down. Did you ever get a number on that or anything? No, I didn't. Know. I, 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 don't know. I know Memphis I don't is know. in trouble. <laughs> no. I, I, I'm not speaking. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't know if they've told them so well or it's just But mm. I'd like to see their, show them what we got and ask them the question. Yes. Can we do that? Well, if they say no, then we don't. <clears throat> period. So that's where I'm at. Commissioner um, Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Tom, your latest proposal shows a $120,000 surplus at the end of the budget year. 
that does not include any upswing in sales tax revenue, correct? Correct. That's going off actuals, not a projected inflated figure, correct? Correct. Last month, how much was the increase in our sales tax revenue? It was a little under $10,000. How many of last year's, how many did we see an increase? How many months? Well, we're just now starting on our second year. No, 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 of this, since this budget that we're in right now. How many to months out of the, you know, last? We're over prior we, year. We, we, we beat last year's revenue every month. We're probably going to beat our revenue by between six and $700,000. This, this year from last. We've grown sales tax revenue by $700,000. I'd say, I'd, I don't know if it's all sales tax, <coughs> but uh, overall revenue. Well, then how are we yes. operating at a deficit? I'm just asking. No, I know. That's what I'm, but how are we operating at a deficit if we've grown that much in revenue? We've got expenditures. I'll, I'll tell you how. I mean, it's real easy. Our debt is $522,000. Um, and then um, that's a big chunk of $600,000. So meaning debt, buildings, cars, trucks, or you're saying monthly expense. Yeah. Yes. Don. The thing that has always got us in trouble is we look at our total revenue. We cannot look at total revenue for our operating budget. It has to be all unassigned. And it's been pretty steady. It has increased. In 2013-14, we, we got 4,317,000. And we're projecting to get 4,483,000 this year. And that's basically what we're projecting for next year. So the unassigned money has not increased significantly, not, to, not as much as our debt service increased. All of a sudden, it, it went up $250,000 this year. So even though our revenue went up, our debt service went up, and that's really where it all went. You know, my biggest fear is we don't have, with the um, debt restructure, we don't, this year, if we don't make cuts, next year, we're going to have even more of an issue because we had a break this year we didn't have to pay our debt and so when we do this by the end of next year we're gonna have to have money to start paying next year and school facility tax and you know whatever our negatives um, is so I just think if we do not have the cuts this year we're only setting ourselves up to fail if, if this new plan, the stabilization plan, and has a $120,000 surplus at the end of the year, and what he just said, it was increased $10,000 a month, it, if it just, and I'm sure it'll be more, and we're not going to count on it, but if it happened, that's another, that's another 120000 That would start us at two hundred and forty to the good, plus having the three sixty put aside. I, I don't understand where all well, of Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Where we're, where we're looking at it from a, a negative standpoint, if what he's proposing to us has a surplus built into it. How did you get the and surplus? It's ten, and it's a 10 cent lower tax rate than the one Commissioner Crutcher's proposing. How did you get the um, surplus? What did you take away from the expenditure and the... Um, You got your revenue minus your expenditures. It gives you a surplus of you know, this. My numbers are a little bit maybe I don't, I'm showing 115, but left me with uh, revenue minus less expenditures 475, 157 minus the 360,000, and the, the stabilization plan is 115, 157 which was $222,675 off the 4.2 million target. 
Okay, and so did you use that um, sell of the property to pay back the school no. facility tax? So we're still negative there. Well, we hadn't sold it. I mean, it, it, when it right. comes and in, it'll, when, it, when it, it comes in, it'll be positive and it'll go in the school facilities. I mean, right. I don't know what that has to do with this number. Well, right no, here. what I'm asking is, so you're saying the whole school facility tax will be paid back? I'm not saying that at no, all. No, that's that's what I'm getting to. Is we we're we're not, we can't say we're at a surplus when we have negative funds. Fund balances. Yes. Well, if we put the entire 360. Yeah, and I, we need to question. I mean, we need the attorney to look into that because that's not. It was you know I was understanding it was unrestricted reserves to build back our reserves. Yes. Tom, was it not your understanding on the stabilization plan that, that the goal was to get two months of spending or operating expenses in the account? Was that not the goal? One month in the LGIP and one month in the checking account for cash flow hedge purposes. That's my understanding. And how long was it your understanding that it was going to take us to accomplish that? Three years. So under the scenario that you presented, we wouldn't be able to accomplish that in three years, correct? If you didn't put 360, if you, if you varied from that, you would not. If you put that 360 toward the school facilities tax, we wouldn't accomplish what you thought we were going to accomplish in three years in three years. I believe the proper thing you all have to do is, is amend your resolution to make up for that. The way the resolution is written now, no, you would not meet it. <clears throat> And the, the other thing is, is Commissioner Johnson, you, and I think you realize it, that it's his proposal to get us there is a 23 and a half cent. Is it 23 and a half cent? To, to 90 cents. Let's get to 90 cents. We're in, increasing taxes to 90 cents. So, so it doesn't come without a price. And we're not cutting on the other side. <laughs> We're two hundred thousand dollars off our mark, no well, matter which is what we've been sitting here messing with for a month now. I've heard the two hundred thousand dollar number floating around for a month, and here we are at the third one of these, and we're still talking about two, really two hundred thousand dollar difference. That sales tax number you just gave us—that is the very latest one we had. Yes, sir. Do we have May, or which would be through April, do we have better actual numbers yet for, for what we've received through April? Uh, yes, our, that's, that's the one Commissioner uh, Johnson was referring to, the April. Well, it's, uh, no, no, I know we got the, for the month, but I'm talking about grand total. See, because, because when, what I look at, Tom, when I look at the 4.48 or whatever, what, what, that projection, I look at what was the actual as of March, which was the last date I had was through the end of March. And then I took the actual from last year, those three months. And that comes up with a higher number than 4.48. I apologize, Commissioner Bissell. I, I have not got all those numbers okay. finalized. All right. Because I, I agree that, that the one thing I think we all agree on is that we agreed to start with the actual revenue as the mayor had proposed. That, that we all agree on. Then it gets a little fuzzy from, from that point on uh, about this or that or, or whatever. I'm not for a dollar tax increase because I don't think, I think that's too much. I, in my mind, uh, the 26 and a half cents breaks down as six and a half cents is the take back or whatever you want to call it from when we lowered those taxes in 2011. And then inflation supports the next 20 cents. Uh, and that was from the last time we actually, we were at this 0 0.70 mark was established and that was in uh, uh, 2004, 2005 timeframe. So I, I think that that's a, that's a fair number. Uh, 
yes, if we raised it, we could then have more money up front to, to get us to where we said we were going to take three years to do that, but at what cost? And while it may not be tangible, uh, I have had personal experience where uh, I have seen organizations that have been reorganized or downsized or, or whatever, much larger organizations uh, where the people didn't know each other. Uh, and I've seen what it can do to an organization to do that uh, rather than give those organizations the chance to solve their own problem. The other thing that jumps out at me and why I cannot support anything that I will support, not a, a flat, hard hiring freeze. Uh, there are no attrition figures in any of these numbers. And we lose one to two people every year. So I, I think that's a factor that's, that's not been included that could be as much as $40,000 that turns up extra surplus. But be it as it is, not, not wanting to make the same mistake twice and bet too much on what will happen. I, I think uh, just using simple math, uh, if, if you lose uh, a half dozen people, their work has to be performed by someone. Now, I don't know every person, well, I know every person that works for the city, but I don't know what their level of performance is. But when I interact with them, and I don't see a lot of people standing around doing nothing. So I assume that they are engaged in something that their management team all the way up to Mr. Hall have said needs to be done in order to provide a service to the public. And that's the business we're in. We're in service to the public. So if that is the case, then when you eliminate six people, whether you, you do it uh, gradually or whether you do it by cuts uh, or you do it by the attrition that will be generated by taking away somebody's salary because people will resign they will find other jobs if you take their money away from them the the bottom line is that that comes out to about 250 hours additional work per person So your workforce is now going to be required to generate the same amount of work. However, if you assume that they are working pretty close to their maximum productivity now, then you've just added five hours of work onto their 40-hour work week already. And we know we can't pay them overtime for it because that's part of the issue here. And we know that giving comp time to cover those five hours at the rate of $250 per person is like giving everybody uh, extra weeks of vacation, which we can't afford then to let them off because that's, again, more work added on to those people that are still here. You, you add that cost to what it costs to replace somebody Assuming again that the work needed to be done or we wouldn't have somebody doing it now. And we don't have a lot of duplication. We have a lot of single function jobs. We have a lot of cross training that goes on, but we don't have a lot of duplication. We don't have two or three people actually doing the same job every day. So what it costs is when you get ready to hire those people back because you realize that you didn't you need that position or you need that work performed and it couldn't get absorbed into it, it costs you a roughly between $700 and $1,000 to train a new person. And these statistics are coming from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. That is a government agency. It is the most comprehensive source you will find for uh, the cost I am speaking from and the hours that I am talking about. These are not Allen's made up numbers. 
You can easily access that on the website. They have uh, hundreds of thousands of data fields that you can sort from if you wish to verify my numbers. It costs you between $700 and $1,000 to hire and initially train somebody to do a job. Obviously, in the fire department or the police department, some of our specialized jobs, it takes us a lot more to do that. But then you also have some jobs that, that most of it's on the job training. You also have the loss of productivity for 90 to 120 days. No one can be expected then to actually be at a full operating level for six months. So losing someone and then hiring them later, even at a lower salary, is a very expensive proposition. The, the other thing I want to talk about, and again, these came from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, the average nationwide for amount of expenses spent on employee-related expenses versus other expenses is 71%. In nonprofit organizations, which we are, the city is a nonprofit organization, it is higher than that. The standard for a nonprofit organization is 50% of the payroll, not taxes, not benefits, 50% of the payroll should be spent on salaries. We spend 50, under the budget that Tom has proposed, we spend 53%, and it doesn't include the attrition factor. So with a hard hiring freeze and a hard promotion freeze, I believe at the end of the year we will be right in the guidelines. We made a decision as a board, not all of us as individuals, but as a board, to spend our money in a very quick fashion to bring up what we believe the infrastructure of this city was collapsing around us. I believe that the mayor and Commissioner Crutcher are right and that we have reached the point that we cannot afford to buy anything else. But I don't know what we need. We have refurbished all of the vehicles. We have refurbished all of the equipment. We are in a year of refinement where we may have overbought or maybe we, like in the cell phones, or maybe we need to look at our policies about who drives what home or whatever. Those are all individual issues that can be addressed as we go through the year in our year of refinement. And if we do have an emergency, we will just have to deal with that just like we've dealt with the other emergencies. The emergency that caused the remainder of the reserve fund was WADC refused to pay to pay to move the water line. That's it. We've danced around that. Didn't have anything to do with buying the police cars. Didn't have anything to do with buying fire trucks. Doesn't have anything to do with the debt. The reserve issue was because WADC said we won't move the water line and TDOT said you can't have the road unless you move the water line. 30 years ago, this city reneged on TDOT four-laning the highway through Fairview for a $170,000 check. We reneged. <laughs> Obviously, I wasn't on the board then. Even Stewart wasn't on the board then. I'm not even sure Stewart wasn't still in elementary school. But the, but the bottom line was that that set the tone for what this city has been looked at by TDOT for the last 30 years. And former Mayor Bryson, Commissioner Johnson, Vice Mayor Sutton, and myself, when we were elected in 2008 to join that board, we spent countless hours sucking up to TDOT to get them to build what happened out there. Then when we got to it and WADC walked away from it, we had a choice come up with $400,000, which we had not planned to spend, or ruin the relationship 
that we personally had spent several years doing, but had been building over 30 years. And the choice was made to spend the money. You know, come along five years later or three years later and say, that was a stupid mistake. Y'all shouldn't have done that. But at the time, just like building the road for Publix because TDOT wouldn't give them dual access to get the tractor trailers in here and they were walking, in the betterment of the city in the long run, we made a choice. Uh, Commissioner Bissell, can Thank I Thank you, but I'm not finished, Mayor. Okay. I just wanted to interrupt and say that it's been a while and we got to continue. I understand, the but, but I waited patiently speech. while everybody okay. else spoke and okay. now it's my turn. Thank well, you. No, I, go ahead, but I'm just saying the time limit's getting okay. a little carried away. I'm, so I'm, I was just giving I'm you very, a polite I'm warning. Very... I wasn't taking it away, but okay. okay. Thank you. I'm reminded by something that President Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt said. And he said when faced with a decision, it's always best to make the right one. So the second best choice is to make the wrong one. And the third one is to do nothing. We're faced with a decision tonight. We've had almost eight hours worth of budget hearings and we have talked about this forever. I'm ready to do something. I'm ready to put the motions on the floor and let's make some decisions and then we will deal with the aftermath of that. But I get it. Commissioner Crutcher thinks we ought to lay off people to achieve what is a very honorable uh, approach. And it's not because he wants to lay off people. I understand him. It's because that's how he sees it is to be done. I get it that the mayor thinks there's an alternative to that. And if everybody just takes a little bite of it, the pain will be a little less. I think that we don't have to do either of those things. I think that we have a responsible workforce that rather than lose or take a pay cut because I have never believed that our workforce makes an abundance of money, that they will make it happen. That the workforce will take whatever we give them in terms of budget and operating and will make it happen. Thank you, Mayor. That's all I had to say. I make a motion to approve uh, the CFO's budget. Go ahead. He just made a motion. Second. Well, there's no, okay. No, there is. Discussion? Go ahead. I just want to be clear. I, I, maybe I'm not explaining it very well. If what I believe, if I am reading this correctly, the shortage is not anything to do with our stabilization plan. We cannot turn in a budget that says our unassigned fund is going to be negative, beginning or ending. So you have to add in enough revenue to get that to zero. So that adds whatever we're short, assuming that they will not let us count the school aid. If they let us count the school fund as part of the funds that we can count on, then we won't be in a negative. Probably. I don't think they did. No, that makes perfect sense. <coughs> the auditors we, did. But we're, the document that Tom's to turn in cannot say it's a negative starting and ending balance. We have to address the revenue to make that even. I'll, I'll research search that, Ms. Donna, and, and but I, I turned it in last year. The state did not uh, call me on anything that was done wrong. They approved it, and I... I appreciate it, but I, I will follow up on that. Well, the difference is last year it was negative 27. Oh, I don't know where that piece of paper was, but this is a larger amount. And now we have, last year we didn't have to file for a debt um, restructuring. 
So it does make it a little bit different. That's just why I'm saying we need to check with somebody who can tell us what the number is. Mm -hmm. What we can count, what we can't count. That's my clarification, <clears throat> what I need on it. And that's basically all I need on it uh, to be able to move forward with it. But you know, can, you can't, you can't, you can't go some other route, in my opinion. Um, but like Tom said, it's, it's, we've done it. We, we made it 180 on the way we're doing things right now. And uh, we went from a was it 5.2 million this year, last year, this year, but mm -hmm. something like that, something like that, down to a 4.2, 4.3. That's a that's a cut. I don't care how you look at it. You, you're cutting something to go down a million dollars uh, for the budget this small. So there's cuts that have been made, and we made some changes. <coughs> and I think they're positive changes to move forward. With it. I don't I don't believe we can do everything at once. I think it's an impossibility to do it without putting a burden on the, on the citizens. It's an extreme, especially when we're talking about taking a larger draw that put it back. And our piggy bank for reserves and taking it from them. So, you know, we're going to have to have a tax increase. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, but I, I want the clarification from it, and I think we can get that between this reading and next reading. Um, yeah, but one of the things I would like to say is um, why are we going to do a little bit of a tax um, increase to be no better off next year because we still going to go in owing the school facility tax with negative funds that we got to pay up back. Wouldn't it be better to do a higher tax increase for a little while and then be able to take it back down instead of, you know, burdening the citizens. You know, I think it's real funny. You want the citizens to take all the burden. And um, the thing about it is we don't want to cut. And that's that's the hard part. And I understand everybody wants their job and loves their job and hopefully loves their job. And, you know, they don't want to lose salaries. I understand that. We've lost lots of salaries this year out of my family. So, but if you have a... $800 house note and you only bring in $600 and you have no set reserves, you're not in a good situation and you're in trouble. And so just to break it down, if house notes make y'all understand, we're in trouble. And I don't know how else to say it, Commissioner. Thank you, Mayor. The reason I was coming with the proposal that I was coming with is because I don't want us to ever be back where we are right now, tonight. And I feel like with the proposal that's been submitted by uh, the administration, we're gonna be having this conversation again next year. This is a maintained budget, not sustained. Not a, there's no sustainability in it. I know nobody likes to get, and I think Commissioner Bissell used the number six people. I never said six <coughs> jobs, what I said was three. There's three cuts in my proposal, um, which I worked up with City Manager uh, Hall and CFO Darty, you know, much like Commissioner Johnson has said, he's he can't support or can't vote for a tax increase. And I, I guess based on not being able to vote for a tax increase, you can't vote for a budget that has a tax increase. I can't go back and vote for a budget that's going to increase taxes more than we cut on the other side, which is what I said I wouldn't do. And by my math, if you take the debt service out of it, which is what makes up half of that million dollars that Vice Mayor Sutton talks about. Um, we've got de we've got deductions or cuts, mainly in the operating side of things, or pretty much totally in the operating side of things, which is concerning to me. And I've said it over and over and over. I don't do any good to say it again. There's cuts of about two hundred nineteen thousand dollars over on that side, so that'll get you for me about twelve cents. So if you can live with a twelve cent property tax increase, that's what I can vote for. I don't know where that puts your numbers, but I was trying to, although I, we don't have to fix it in one year, I agree. I, I just really don't want us to have this conversation. It's not pleasant for anybody, the citizens. It's not pleasant for employees that have been strung along for the past however long. I don't know what they've been told, whether that we're in this situation or, or whether it's been sugar-coated or, or whatever, but... We've been talking about this as long as I've been on the board since November. We've been talking about that this day was coming. This day's coming. I've heard it. Even before I was on the board, I heard it. This day's coming. And 
now we're here. It's not pleasant for anybody, and I don't ever want to experience it again, to be honest with you. So that's why I was making the drastic proposal that I'm making. I don't want to raise people's taxes to a dollar. I don't want to do that either. Um, got a lot of emails last week about raising taxes to a dollar. But I think it puts us not on a maintain level, but on a, on a level where we're going to make a big stride at the end of the next fiscal, or this coming fiscal year, to where we're going into the future on farm footing with some funds that have been designated based on those earmark tax money, that earmark tax money, to do some things that that we need to do. I mean, yeah, I mean, Commissioner Bissell said, "What else do we need to do?" I mean, maybe we don't need to build anything right now. I don't, you know, I don't know. I mean, I know that there's probably the way if we if we get the growth we expect, there's probably another fire hall in the future somewhere in town. Um, there's, there's maintaining buildings. And that's what's really concerning to me most on this in this budget. There's just little to any any uh, appropriations for, for maintenance. I mean, we've built, yeah, we've, I said it last, last time we were here, we've built all this stuff up, but <coughs> can't maintain it. <laughs> we're going to end up with some, you know, some broken down equipment and buildings and, and grounds that are not kept. And, you know, I, I hear over and over and over that we've got, issues in the street department with equipment. I don't, I don't think we have all the equipment we need in the street department, and unfortunately we can't afford to give the street department what they probably need to do their job under the current scenario. And I just just feel like that um, with what I'm proposing, we'll be able to do that, and it's the least drastic alternative to, you know, to, to doing, no offense, but to doing what the mayor's proposed with cutting across the board, and that's, that's my take on it. Well, I mean, I actually have another proposal tonight. Um, Ms. Brooks, I don't know if you want to um, share that right now as an option. It basically, uh, it doesn't meet the, the number that we need. Um, but it's it, it comes in at 4.3 million. But it returns everybody to all the employees to their 630 14 wages, a cut of the city manager by 7%, returns the code's director to the previous director's salary, and 2% from the fire chief. Uh, left the part time and overtime at the levels proposed by Tom because I assume that he knows where that's coming from. <laughs> Cut the telephone expense in half, and whatever that buys, if it's just landlines, that's what we get. If it can provide cell phones, you pick the people who actually need the cell phones. And you set a limit, and if they go over it, they have to pay. Um, leave the cars parked, except for those people who live in the 37062 zip code. Um, I set the fire equipment to $40,000, I'm not sure if that's a good number or not. The fire chief would have to tell us. Um, reduce the insurance to the next lowest level. The commissioners not be eligible for medical insurance ex unless they have um, an employee who they, that they get it from. Free salaries, promotions until city finances are in order, which is around 800,000 in undersigned reserves. No positions added or replaced unless the BLC approves. And a spending cap for the city manager of $1,200 without BLC approval. But budgeted items of more than that could be handled through email to everybody and y'all say yay or nay without waiting for the next meeting. That gets us to, if I could figure out which one of these sheets is mine. in total the employees would still be and that leaves everybody that is employed employed um, including the grant fireman that's open you, we would replace that grant fireman um, 
the employee related expenses would be three million five seventy two. It affects everybody. So, uh, and by the end, everybody keeps their job, even the grant positions. Everybody goes back. Most people would only lose um, the two percent, but the insurance plan is. Um, we would have we, to we go need the number, the final number on the insurance. Um, 356 now if if someone if the department heads could go through what and I left the expenses the same as we spent this year unless I identified why I cut it like the telephones and um, I didn't put 34,000 in the transportation equipment because I think that was the park truck last year um, that number okay, I've got 721 in the, okay. yeah. Uh, if, if the department heads can find 50,000, we can go back and get the original insurance plan that was talked about, but I cut it 50,000. I didn't have access to the insurance plans to look at to know what the numbers really were. <coughs> and I didn't have it with me when I sent her. So what, I knew it was 30000 more, 28000 more um, cost to us, but the insurance plans were um, better. The first option, the R, I didn't bring it with me. Yeah, I don't know why it wasn't in my... It's 35500 35, So that's one of the numbers we might have to tweak. Maybe the fire chief doesn't need 40000 in fire equipment. I don't know. But yes, go ahead. The, the other thing about the budget that was presented uh, by administration is, is that it came back with not only was it over the, the 3.5, it, it still kept that um, the very first insurance policy that we talked about, it still kept that in there as well. So essentially there was there was no there were no cuts made on that side, with the exception of some part time, which we moved. I think we moved Judge Dreyer out of um, Overtime, which shouldn't have been, he shouldn't have been there, moved him up to part time, and um, and then cut some of the overtime. That's a small amount. One of my the only cuts there were. One of my, my main concerns is I've, you know, I've watched us say, oh, we can make it. You know, I remember last year I was like, oh, don't use the whole projection for Walmart. Oh no, we, we have three months. We projected it out, and I remember that. And so we, we just went on hope. Well, this is what it has gotten us. Hey, yes, go ahead. The, that also brings the street employees and the drug officer back into the unassigned operating cost. So you would have the 200000 for street aid to use on streets and whatever the drug fund comes in for whatever we need it for. The way it should be. Any questions? Other comments? Just, just that this is the first reading, this is not the final reading on it, we'll have time to make changes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I said, oh. <laughs> this, this would not even be, this would not even be the it's first reading. I'm just, I'm just they, they would have to take. time to make changes and get the questions answered that right. we need to move forward. They would have to, uh, uh, city attorney and the CFO would have to present us with a first read resolution on the June the 3rd meeting. Yes, well, that would be the first, that would be the first read. <coughs> well, um. If I may, I, I feel like uh, for numbers wise, the two, the bottom two are the clear choice. But 
And I, if, if we were in a location that was flat, flatlined economically, um, we had no, no optimism whatsoever uh, economically. Um, you know, I, I, of course, I don't think we'd be in this position. I, I don't, I don't think. But I, what what I keep coming back to, and what Mr. Hall and I have talked about, going through all these numbers, and coming back to it is 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 as managers, and as as uh, representatives of the employees, we just we just feel it's they have taken a lot of. Uh, issues over the past years and um, we've heard a lot of things and we have uh, morale has, has really been pretty good this year as, as good as it can be and um, I, I think anything that you know I think it's I think the employees I, I guess any of these two options is going to drastically affect the um, the workforce. They've just, I think, the major majority after talking are here. Um, so I'm just telling you, I think on paper the numbers here are good, but you're going to throw a lot of money out the door because there's going to be people going out the door, and I, I it's it's just the fact. Um, so, but we're 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 taking a stand. We're supporting the employees. We feel like the two hundred thousand dollars is well worth uh, keeping qualified, trained staff. Um, if and if the board doesn't, we we'll, we will go through with your wishes. Whatever you tell us to do, we'll do it, and um, and we'll do it to the best of our abilities. Um, Commissioner Crutcher had waved. Y'all go with you next. Tom, do you agree that the seven hundred eleven thousand dollars that you have on the operating expenses is just absolutely the bottom of the? It's just absolutely the 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 the, bo the least amount that we can operate with and, and do it where we're not just crippling the employees. It's ability it's, to do it it's pretty close. Okay, so and there's so there's no cushion built into that number at all. Uh, you might find a nickel here and there. So if anything goes. Anything happens unexpected next next year, which, as we all know, life happens and the unexpected happens. There's no money there to deal with that. Do you agree with that? Right, and then also in my proposal, I, I, I said how we'd have to address it. Thank you. Um, Mr. Well, Sutton, I okay, are I wasn't, you? I wasn't. Okay. Finished. In your proposal, if I recall, it said that we'll address it with surplus money. No, sir, in special revenue funds. Okay. And then if, if, we, if it's not, the money's not available there, we, we would have to bring it to the board and, and decide how to handle it. So if we couldn't take it from one of those special revenue funds, it's just something we just couldn't do, right? If it wasn't, if it was an emergency that, that didn't qualify to be spent out of the special revenue fund, we, we, we would have to come up with another solution. Okay. And... Do you agree that it's been tough doing your job this year worrying about whether or not you can write a check for $250 for something or we need to replace a water pump in a truck, whether or not you can write that check? Do you agree that's kind of been hard? Oh, definitely. It's been extremely, extremely tight, and that's why I'm, I'm ecstatic that, that we're going in the other direction with any one of these. Fairview, City of Fairview is turned around 180 degrees. But based off what you just said, there's really no room, there's no wiggle room in this budget. If something like that does happen, you're going to spend another year under the budget that you guys proposed wondering whether or not you have the money to, to well, write I, that I did. I did say surplus, but you will have $360,000 put back that if it was an emergency, 
that there at least there's money in that's not what i walked into see that's the problem that's what's got us that's partially what's got us where we are now we, we have this money that's put back and what money we've had put back in the past was put back in the form of the school's facilities tax that we've just gone and grabbed every time we've had an emergency or we needed to to make ends meet on a given month so now we, we've had this stabilization plan in place so we're going to tuck that 360 away yet we know that 360 is still there so if we need it we get to a situation where we have to have it we're going to grab it, then we don't have the 360, then we're right back to where we are today. That's the nature of emergencies. And, you know, I think we're walking in a, in a, a thin line not having any, any emergency fund. Uh, and I, I, I'm, I think that is, has to be the number one priority. And I, I'm in agreement. I think on, on paper, these other two plans put more money back. I mean, I'm not disagreeing with that. I know. I'm just trying to understand the logic behind wanting to continue down a path that we're in, that, that, that continue down the same path. I'm just trying to understand the logic behind that. I mean, I don't think that either of you have had the ability, and probably other people within this city, employees within this city, have had the ability to do their job at the level that they should be able to do their job because we as a city don't have the ability to provide them with all of the tools that they should be provided. Uh, and, that's, and that's organization wide. And what's presented to us tonight is a budget that essentially just keeps the status quo. It, do, it does exactly what I've said it does. It just maintains us. It maintains us. There's no room for error. Um, if we miss, which historically we've not been very good projectors, um, if we miss, we're in trouble, and we're right back dipping into funds again. We're, we're just not fixing the problem. We're, we're just not, and I, I just don't. I don't know why we want to continue to live like that. I do not understand it. Um, I, I had a couple people. Well, Mr. Hall's been waiting, and then you had something. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, it is true. Uh, my main goal. Is public safety and if we cut force we do have an emergency we've got to protect our citizens and I think that's where your hits going to come from is in the, the possibility that we won't be able to supply emergency uh, to our citizen in the event of an emergency I was the commissioner liaison with the Red Cross when the tornado hit within a mile of our downtown. I realize what happened there with public safety and what it took to get an emergency took care of. We had citizens out there getting out there on top of roofs from within our city. We had some of our employees on their off time over there helping get trees out of the road, get trees off the roofs. The fortunate thing we didn't have anyone die there. If that happened to Fairview right now, we would be in a bad situation because we couldn't supply, even right now with the staff we have, we couldn't supply that emergency. We would have to depend on other cities and other help from all over the state to help us. In our FEMA classes that we've run into, there is a chain of command <coughs> and you have to have funds to do that. Granted, we don't have them. We started with $369 in the budget in our reserve account. That $369 is still there. We have maintained a level and kept our services up. That's the reason I can't face this workforce with a decrease in, in workforce or a decrease in pay. I run the numbers all weekend long with Tom Every time I run them, I couldn't face them. Now, if y'all want to hold that against me, then hold it against me. But we've got to protect our citizens and our workforce that we have right now is understaffed. Our fire department is understaffed. I believe our police department is at a level where we can maintain that. Uh, Tom and I are going to get MTAS in here to do a, a, a study to see if we are staffed properly or if we're overstaffed. At that time, then I will probably come back to you and let you know where we stand. But 
that's my feel on it. And uh, Tom has done a fantastic job as far as I'm concerned. I do know of two areas that we can still cut in, in our figures. One of those is the insurance policy. We can go down to the second level. I think our employees will live with that. The other level is uh, we are cutting the phones, and we do have an estimate on, on another phone system, which is substantial. Uh, it will cut our possibly our phone system instead of 80,000 a year to cut it down to somewhere in the 40,000 range. Uh, so we're doing everything that we can as a staff to maintain the public safety, which starts the meetings that I go to, the mayor actually heard it too, one of the first things out of uh, Rogers Anderson's mouth was public safety comes first. And that's my, I've always thought that way. I've already always done that same public safety thought when it comes to the planning commission level. That's the first thing you think of is whether the project meets public safety. Uh, but if you want to blame me, blame me. Because, but that's the reason I felt that we did not need to cut staff We'll do everything we can within our power to maintain the staff at the level we got. Thank you. Go well, Mr. Hall, are you, suggest are you suggesting that neither the mayor nor I, we, we care about public safety? I, I do, yes, sir. But that's, that was my goal. It, after running the numbers that the mayor had asked for, running your numbers, I just couldn't face losing our uh, staff in the event of an emergency, but they, they do emergencies every day of the week. I understand. Life threatening, but no, I'm not suggesting that at all. How many out of the, out of the three, three positions that I've talked about, how many, do you know how many were in public safety? Two of them. Two. Um, and, and, you know, I understand where management's coming from. I get it. I know, I know that it's difficult, but just in the short time, since November, there's just been one thing after another that, from a decision-making standpoint, and, I, and, I, and this is not, I don't, I don't want to, from a decision-making standpoint, there's been one thing after another that has been problematic for me. Um, in the middle of, of this situation, in March, we, we hire another person in public safety, knowing that we're, knowing that we're in this, this budget, budgetary I don't want to use the word crisis. I got in trouble for using that before, but situation. Um, we, we have said, I've heard management say time and time again that we have cut everywhere we can cut. We've cut everywhere that we can cut. And then here we are in May working on the budget, and we find $13,000 worth of cell phones laying around that we didn't even know were laying around and that we were paying for, apparently. Um, I mean, I have full confidence that, that, that you guys are doing the right thing for the city and the right thing for your city, for the, for the employees. I, I understand, but we, we just not, <laughs> we've not made very good decisions. And, you know, just, just like the, the, the public safety that was, that was the position that was filled in March, I just for the life of me, I can't wrap my mind around why we would fill that position in the middle of what we called a hiring freeze. Now, interestingly, on this budget, we've, we've said we're going to strictly enforce that. I don't know what strictly. I thought we were strictly enforcing that in March. Um, I just have concerns. I, I just don't understand why we want to continue down this. I've said it again. This is the last thing I'm going to say. I just don't understand why we want to continue to live under this, in these conditions. I just don't understand it. But if, that, if that's what you guys are, are proposing and, and you guys want to, I don't think that's in the best interest of the citizens. I don't. It may be in the best interest of, of 59 people, and I understand that, and I respect those 59 people and the job that they do. And, um, but, I, but I just don't think that it's in the best interest of, of the citizens, and I, I, can't, I can't vote for it. I can't do it. Yeah. Just real simple, I just want to say moving forward, if we have a clear understanding of using restricted funds, Larry, I can't remember us having a meeting authorizing the use of restricted funds. Uh, the only one I remember is the uh, one for pay payment for the library, which was. That was still within that fund, according to the county. Uh, that's that. Well, according to the state statute, that was within the fund, and the county agreed with it. I don't think, and in that instance. I don't remember us, and, I, and we 
shouldn't have spending out of other funds. Now, I, I don't know how the uh, uh, accounting part of it is where they count it, but if you've got a restricted fund, it has to be spent within the lines, the guidelines of that restricted fund. And, 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 and the library was, uh, I was one who suggested let's get the county's uh, uh, agreement, which they did agree, but I don't think you would really have to have it because the state statute says that with board authorization you can spend it for any public purpose that's related to, to schools. Certainly, the library is, is related somewhat to schools, and I'm not even sure, I don't think you have to, as long as it's a public purpose, uh, you can argue about what constitutes a public purpose, but I think you could do that, but I don't recall having a, a meeting authorizing spending any fund, any restricted funds, all of that one. Keep it real brief, because I don't do that. Yeah, I, I, don't, re you, I don't recall. We didn't have, at the time, you have a clear understanding now that we can't use restricted funds to, to pay something else. Am I correct? Moving forward. Correct, and, and this is it's not classified as restricted under the um, state contract. It's, it's, it's classified as a, as a committed fund. That the, the revenue come, come in is committed to... Uh, school facility improvement, or if it's something else that goes to the ch the kids, that that money's supposed to be spent. Well, uh, it's been this way since I've been here, and I've been struggling with it the entire time. And we've got to a get that fund fully funded, and b move it out of the checking account. Uh, bottom line. But um, at the end of this year, we're not going to have done that. I agree. With, with this budget that you proposed, it will not do that. I agree. I think our first priority is the stabilization plan, and our second priority is the um, the school facilities fund. Um, they both need to be done. What happens? Okay, sorry. Just what I, well, the question I asked you, we have a clear understanding that we're not going to use those funds for anything else other than what they're designated for. Yes. And what happens if the county wants the money and we don't have it? We breach the contract. Well, uh, actually, I can't tell you this from something that's been done. I can't substantiate it with case law or anything like that. But the county could only, they can only spend, now theirs is more restrictive than yours. They can only spend theirs for school-related items. Not anything other public funds, any, I mean, any other public purpose or anything like that. You, the municipalities are given a little bit more leeway. Uh, the county, if they decide to build a school up here, then that's when they would be asking you for the funds. And the only thing that, that you could do is, is, is come up with the funds because the funds were sent to the city and there should be in that. Now, I'm not saying the comptroller and the auditors may allow you to carry that in, in with other monies as far as totals, but any restricted fund, the statute that created that restrictive fund would take precedence over that, and it clearly states what you can use it for. Now, and, and that's the, the one that, that you have that's in that, in that manner. The other funds that you have are funds that was created by this board. I don't think you could take those and use them for just general stuff, but the, the, this board has more leeway in the funds that they created themselves to make the determination as to does it fall under this fund? Can we take it out of this fund? No, we can't. We've got to take it over here. Uh, clearly, you couldn't take it out for something that doesn't apply to that, that's just totally, you know, beyond reason to have been in that fund. And I'll use an example, you know, if, uh, the park fund, if you wanted to, if you were having something in the park, uh, you could take park funds to, if it was a picnic or whatever, for uh, whatever reason that you wanted to have that the citizens was going to be involved and you wanted to buy decorations for, the, for that fund out of the park fund. If this board determined that, that would be within their realm to determine. If you wanted to buy, take those, to buy those same identical <coughs> decorations and put them somewhere outside the park, put them down on Deer Ridge Road where you're going to sell the property, for an auction, that would not be, in my opinion, a proper. So, what on happens funds. if the board didn't designate that you could take the money out? Well, the city is still liable for for taking the money out because unless you can show that it was taken out for something other than, uh, if it was a city purpose, then you'd still have to put the money back. 
I don't think the money was, it'd be a, a misappropriation for a city, for a city purpose. I don't like the word. It, it would be, it would be an improper use of the money for a city purpose. It, it would not be a, a crime because if you took you took it out and used it for a city purpose, there was there was no crime. You'd have to put the money back. If you took it out and used it for a non-city purpose, the city would have committed a criminal act. But in that case, we don't have. Um, they don't. You just said earlier for like the designated funds, parked funds, that we would have to prove for the money to be spent out of, of a restricted or designated. Or it's not restricted, but designated fund. Or any fund that the board creates, uh, they didn't create the, the adequate facilities fund. But if you're creating a, a fund, you've got restrictions. You can't spend it for anything else other than what comes under that designation. There's several things in there you could do it. Uh, if you determined it was a public purpose, and, and the board should be able to determine what is a public purpose. If it was spent for something else, might be a legitimate city purpose. The city would still be liable for the funds. Yes. Can I ask it a different way? Yes. Larry, let's say the money was all spent legitimately, mm -hmm. and the county come and said that they they came to us and said they wanted such and such dollars, and we didn't have it. What happens then? Well, there's a couple of things that could that could happen. Uh, they could insist that you have it, and you'd have to use the whatever the city has to do to get that money to put it back All you'd right. have to stop what here's, say. here's my question then if that's the case and we have more leeway to spend it how we see fit and we have already spent it how can we be obligated obligated to pay it back just because they want it what you would have to do is, is show uh, you would have to show that each expenditure what it was that was spent out of that fund and show that it was a for a public purpose that falls under the statute. You would get credit for that. Uh, I'm not sure that, I don't know how uh, detailed the records were about money that was taken out of what it was spent for, but it would be a, an, an item by item by item, and the ones that falls under there, you'd get credit for. The ones that don't, you'd have to come up with the money. Good enough. Does employee salaries count for that? On the uh, adequate facilities fund? Mm -hmm. Uh, <coughs> it would depend on what they were, what they were doing, when the funds was used to pay their salary. If they were doing something for the schools, then it might come under there. If they were not doing that, if it's for general pur purpose work, no. Um, can you research that and come back with us and kind of tell us um, what would be appropriate things that we could, the city staff or city manager could just spend for whatever without having, um, you know, board's approval? Because any other time, the board would have to approve it. Like when we gave money to the schools, it came in front of the board. When we gave money right. to the library. And, and, that, and you would get credit for that because that is a public purpose that's encompassed under the statute. Now, some of the other things, I don't, I mean, I can give you definition of a public purpose, and I can tell you that, that if it's spent, if it's a public purpose under that statute, I can bring you the statute and tell you what the statute says and all that stuff. But as to, you know. Um, yeah, I want you to research it and read it and see what falls. Right, but, I don't want to do a hypothetical. Right, as to a listing, though, of what would constitute those items, that would be pretty hard to do. I mean, obviously the library would. Giving to the schools to buy computers, equipment for the schools, that would come under there. I already looked at that. There's no, I don't have any problem with that. But uh, as to giving you an uh, absolute finite number of things that would and would not fall under there, I, I don't think anybody could do that. Yes, Commissioner. Thank you, Mayor. I, I just wanted to amend the motion to uh, move that the uh, budget that I have proposed um, with the only change to it being that the uh, 15 cents uh, in property tax be taken out of the general fund and put into appropriate funds based on what they're designated for, parks, debt service, and streets, and that that budget come back to us uh, for review at the next uh, regularly scheduled Board of Commissioners meeting. 
And Tom has that. It he would, has that. It would, it would be good if we, we could approve uh, something so that we can come back with a first reading uh, next meeting. Well, then I move we approve that budget that I presented with the change that I've just made with respect to revenue that that 15 cents come out and be designated into the appropriate funds, revenue adjusted accordingly in the unassigned, uh, and that that be the budget that's presented for first reading at the uh, next BOC meeting. Okay, we have a amended motion. We got a first, anybody a second? I'll second it. Discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay, I'm going to the first motion. Um, we had a first and second. Are we finished with discussion? Um, one last thing I would like to say, I know it's not the final, um, this is just to come back. Um, but I would like to say that I, know and love Mr. Hall and Mr. Darty and many of these employees. And it hurts and it is hard to make decisions about cuts, but I have set up here for five years and we've done a hope and a dream. We, you know, and it hasn't worked for us. And I think you're gambling with the citizens and, um, you know, I've tried in every way to try to think of ways for everybody to come together and us all take cuts and make it right and keep the comptroller out of our hair and do what's good for the citizens. And, you know, I'm just kind of disappointed that y'all can't bring anything to the table. And I'm not asking for bodies. You know, we came back and we said we needed the salaries to be this range. And, you, you know, you're not doing it. It doesn't matter. And I have seen you cut. Oh, y'all have done miracles, Mr. Hall and Mr. Darty. And I've seen the staff cut, and we've come such a long way. But this year we were in a hiring freeze, and we hired new people. We gave promotions. We kept moving forward. And, you know, the thing about it is how can I trust? that you're going to be on a hiring freeze this time. I mean, it's hard to trust it. And if you don't have to come for our board approval every time, then you can do whatever you want to, and that's what y'all's done. And I, as a citizen, find it offensive. And um, I say with that with all the love in my heart, because I, you know, these people I love, and do I think they've done a great job? And I, do I know it hurts them, and they don't want to have these conversations? And I feel horrible that the employees for a week had to worry if, was it me? Is it me? Who, who am I going to pick? Who's going to be the cut? That was a horrible work environment, and we should have never put y'all in that environment. But the point is, with my proposal, and I'm assuming with Shana's proposal, is we have to be realistic, and reality needs to come in. And, you know, if we can't do that, then, um, you know, look, all I'm going to do, I have a voting record, I have things that I've proposed, and I've done everything in my power to try to get y'all to realize that we're just, we're, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. Yes. There was one officer hired after two was already gone. I was explained to him that it needed to be rehired. If that's a hiring freeze, but I was told if the, the positions was necessary that I could hire them back. So that was what I was told, Mayor. Um, if you want to hold that against me, then do so. Well, Mr. But that's Hall, the only one that was hired. 
Mr. Hall, um, you know, the thing about it is, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful to you, and nor do I think you should be disrespectful to me, because we have a great working relationship, and we do every day. But the thing about it is, the point is, we didn't say a hiring freeze. Y'all said a hiring freeze. You said you weren't going to hire anybody, and y'all did. Replacing positions, you said, you've said, oh, it's crucial, we need this, well, you know, so that's fine. But here's the thing, we had promotions, we had, when we were on a tight budget, and that's, you know, you can't run around that. <coughs> it's just not um, the way to do it. Anyway, we have a first and second. Any other discussion? Okay, may I, inter may I interject yes. something? Yes. Um, it's not Mr. Hall's or my... Um, we did not bring any of this on the city, and we have done our very best to try to turn this ship around. And in my opinion, it's 180. You can paint the picture that we hadn't done our job, but we have. And y'all decide what y'all want to do, and we'll do it. I don't well, think anybody's you know painted what? that picture. I don't think that's it, and I think the problem is it's getting personal, but it's not personal. I just said, y'all have done a great job cutting, and I understand that you don't want to let people go, but we have told you. Last meeting, we told you what we wanted to do, and we got a vote. We had three votes, and it wasn't brought back to us. So the four. point, four, four votes, and it wasn't brought back. So, you you know, we I don't know what else to to say besides we got to set our emotions aside and do the business of the city and what's best for the people and the employees. I mean, sitting around this week was not good for the employees. I, I sure hope nobody's thought that I've said you guys haven't done a good job because that's no. not it at all. I do, I do think that, that you were tasked to come back with a number, and, and not once did we not come back with a number, but twice we didn't come back with a number. I've, I've got two proposals here with your number on it, and I have requested the board to uh, re reconsider the $200,000 so that we can, we can uh, keep this staff intact. That's, that's our request. I've nothing else. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, if that's it, the second item on the agenda, I think we're going to have to defer because um, we're in no better position to make a vote on it today. Actually, Mayor, I believe we did by virtue of passing the first one. Well, it wasn't passed. It's just for them to come back. So this that's is an actual. It, was, it wasn't. It was for them to come back with the budget. You said it earlier. There wasn't the... Um, Y'all wanted to prepare a first reading. So basically, agenda item number two could not have been taken up under any circumstances because we did not have the first reading of the budget tonight. Is that correct? Well, that's how, I mean, I would understand it. So it should have never been placed on the agenda anyway. So do we get a motion to remove it? Or do we can do it, just remove it? Okay. Okay, we'll defer it to the next meeting. Well, I guess we have to move, yeah, to, do defer. We... move to defer it to the next meeting. Second. Okay, first and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, um, opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we're, uh, this meeting is adjourned. You're going to get a motion? Okay. This is, this is a rare opportunity we have to have as many city employees here that we have, uh, fire, police, everybody, just about everybody's here. And we all, I'm sure, and I'm not speaking out of line, I don't think, appreciate everything that y'all do each and every day. And we've got tough decisions to make, and, and it's but, but there's no question about the job y'all do and the appreciation that we have for each and every one of y'all. That's all I can say. Thank you. I agree. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? We're adjourned. Second. Okay, first and second, we're adjourned. Yeah. Yeah. Yes.